you got I, a whole other book there, Gary. I have a question too. <laughs> I have a question too about um, the antediluvian Nephilim in particular. Yep. I remember hearing in a recent interview that uh, you, you were talking about how these giants, these Nephilim, knew that there was a judgment coming. They were the ones who uh, passed on the uh, the seven sacred sciences. They were passing this knowledge on to men. And they knew that judgment was coming, but they didn't know if it was going to come by water or by fire. And so they wanted to preserve this knowledge in either case. So my question is, how did they do that? Where Where is it alleged that they hid this knowledge and preserved it? Yeah. It's a it's a very very good question, and so just to lay a little bit of groundwork for people who uh, aren't familiar with some of this material. So you have an organizational structure that begins in the sixth generation with the creation of the giants. You have the marriage of the seven sacred sciences developed by Enoch, son of Cain, that develops the mystical religions to hold these sciences, and you have the uh, start of the mystery schools to educate the elite and to continue in the seven sciences that will then merge with the illicit knowledge from the angels. And this is in place for when the giants come along to usurp the, uh, the organizational structure of the world and usurp the kingships because of their virtual size. And just to throw it out that the Antediluvian giants were much larger than the post-diluvian giants. So when we run across Goliath, um, well over a thousand years after the flood using biblical chronology and longer using secular chronology, we get a dimension of six cubits and a span. And a cubit is generally thought to be 18 inches, but a royal cubit is 21 inches. And I make the ar argument that Goliath is actually the king of Gath at that time and not just the warrior. And that when David selected five smooth stones, he selected the stones to kill the five Rephaim kings of the Philistine Pentapolis if he had to, not that he was going to miss. Right? So he downed <laughs> Goliath. Yeah. And Goliath would be by those dimensions nine feet nine inches tall to 11 feet three inches tall and that's okay. well diluted and beyond and Og's bed was nine cubits so he would have been somewhere between 12 and 15 feet tall depending on the measurement that that you're using because he had an iron bed because he was so heavy and i give a right. vivid description of what the nephilim looked like uh, in chapter four for people um and the size of them but the antediluvian giants were much bigger probably 20 to 40 feet tall. Uh, in a secular record, we actually get uh, Gilgamesh, who's talked about in the Ugaritic texts, yep. and in um, the Sumerian texts being 11 cubits tall, and he's after the flood. Um, and so he would have been 16 to 19 feet tall. So these things were, wow. weren't were just taller. Yeah. The taller ones were the hybrids. <laughs> These were giants yeah. compared to, to the humans. And so when we look at what the giants were able to do very quickly is take over the whole world, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. who could stand against them? Right. And so now they know the flood is coming. They know that through Enoch, son of Cain. Mm -hmm. And in some of the Enochian literature, it talks about going to Enoch while still on earth, while Enoch, son of Jared, men, and they're being told of the flood and there's nothing that they can do about it. Or they're told of the disaster that's yeah. coming. And so they decide with the priesthood of the mysticists at that time, they were going to preserve this knowledge. So now in secret societies. So Freemasonry is a Johnny Come Lee organization being formed um, in the 1320s after the fall of the, with the mm -hmm. escaping adepts of the Knights Templar, some of them. Yeah. And they're called Freemasonry, but the ancient organization are the Royal Masons or Masonry. And that's the Royal Bloodlines, and those are the higher orders of the secret societies. And mm -hmm. Masonry, through the Polychronicon, 
takes their history and they also use some biblical history and they like to mesh it in with the Polychronicon. They take their history back to before the flood to the yes. Canaanite patriarchs, right? Yeah. And Tubal Cain is one of their most famous patriarchs of metallurgy yeah. and weaponry and things like that. And Which just as Nama is, is just as Jubal and Jubal are. And it's amazing yeah. that those patriarchs, including Enoch are all mentioned in the Canite line, and only four of the offspring of Lamech, two Lamechs, one on the Seth side, one on the Canite side, but uh, the, the four of the son of the Lamech on the Canite side are major patriarchs in the creation of masonry and secret societies. And so they're going to want to save knowledge. So in the generation of Lamech with the sons are going to save the knowledge that Enoch wrote on 36,525 books. I don't know how big they are, whether on stone tablets or whatever, but he hides them in nine vaults. Okay. And really? according to Masonic history, they're hidden underneath the pyramids. Called it. And this yep. is all recorded yep. in the history of Freemasonry. <laughs> yep. And they also create two pillars. One, in one legend, it's called the Pillars of Enoch, and another Masonic legend is called the Pillars of Lamech. And they're designed to survive fire or flood. And then a fellow called Hermes finds these two pillars after the flood. Gets the, the knowledge is of not only all of the antediluvian knowledge, but also the antediluvian religion that I like to call Enochian mysticism. Enochian yes. son of Cain mysticism. Um, mm -hmm. And he takes this knowledge back to another infamous character in Masonic history called Nimrod, who is touted as the first ah, post diluvian grand ever. master. Yeah. After the flood, he writes the first constitution, takes the religion, institutes it at Babel, takes the knowledge. And Bill starts to build Babel City and Babel Tower. And in the Bible, mm -hmm. we get a sense of this knowledge because it says that acting as one people together with one king, essentially, you there's nothing that they will try to do will be, be prevented from doing. That's a sign of the knowledge. Just as where did this knowledge yeah. come from to build Babel Tower and Babel City? If all this knowledge right. was lost, then Noah wasn't going to continue in those evil ways because he was pure and selected for, for the cause. Yeah. And so that's how they transfer the knowledge. And this bank of knowledge has many, many names. This image and the pearls of wisdom. It's called the golden apple. Yes. The archives of the mason called the golden mm -hmm. fleece. All of those yep. metaphors, the there's dawn. many, many more. Y yeah, you have uh, the uh, Shatia, you have the emerald tablet. They have the Tableau mm -hmm. of the Thoth. They're essentially the same thing, but they're all talking about this bank of knowledge. The Book of Razi. Um, yeah. Okay. That is antediluvian knowledge that is going to be really implemented in the end time because if you think about what they're doing at Babel, and if you think about what they built before the flood with the pyramids, and the Masons take credit for using Enochian's uh, knowledge uh, and I was going to ask if you, if you felt the, like the, the cities, uh, pyramids, yeah. pyramids were built before the flood, is what you're saying. Yes. Well, I even talk about the the uh, tablet of uh, Narmer or Menes um, that they're showing. It shows in the background the 52 degree slope of the Great Pyramid. And that's dated okay. to 3000 BC by secular records. So it's oh. way older than what wow. they're telling us. Yeah. Um, so awesome. then there, and, and I present a little bit more evidence, but I don't spend a lot of time on that in the book. I'm just sort of setting the, you know, the, the table. I'm talking about something as so how do we know this, right? Yeah. Oh, sure. So, yeah. Um, so it was this knowledge of Enoch that was used to build the, these uh, great monuments so that the people would say, how advanced was that civilization? <laughs> Which is mm -hmm. why they're trying to hide it right now, right? And we, yeah. we do not have the ability to build to those exacting specifications with sacred geometry, astrological alignments, the yeah. technology to, to move the stones, to do that type of, we don't have any of that. We are just we catching yep. up to that level of technology today. And that knowledge was ramped up by the illicit knowledge of fallen angels 
that got them to a level where the Nephilim actually rebelled against God. Uh -oh. And in polytheism, it's all a in inexplicable manners that I think we are now yeah. um, experiencing that same ramp up in knowledge as, the, as they did before the flood. So that's how they managed to preserve it according to Masonic records. And of course, you get similar records around the world centered around this sort of bank of knowledge.